What's up everyone? I'm Basilia for Five Foot Nomad and in this channel we share content about working online and living the digital nomad life and living an awesome life in general. So in this video guys, I'm going to be sharing with you my experience living in Cape Verde. I spent nine months of 2020, you know, the peak of the pandemic, I spent it in Cape Verde. And why did I end up there? How did I end up there? What was my experience like there? And what is life like living there? Who is Cape Verde good for? I'll be sharing all of that information with you in this video. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit subscribe, give me some likes and yeah, hit on that notification button so you can be notified whenever there's new videos. So let's dive right in guys. Before we continue, if you are interested in relocating to Cape Verde, my siblings are currently residents of Cape Verde and my sister makes YouTube videos which are very, very useful detailing about cost of living in Cape Verde, what life is like in Cape Verde, even how to speak the language because she's a French teacher, she's a Portuguese teacher, she's a language teacher basically and she teaches Creole, she teaches all these languages. So if you're interested in learning more about Cape Verde because you're all about that serene life, my sister's channel is UV's vlog. I will tag her on this video and include her channel link in the description below so you can watch all these useful videos about Cape Verde that she puts out constantly so you can learn more about the country. If you're already moving and you want to learn the language you can contact her as well because like I said she's a language teacher yeah. So I lived in Cape Verde for nine months, you know, but before I dive into how I got there, what happened there, where is Cape Verde? You know, a lot of people don't know where this is, especially because if you have like a first glance on the map, it's easy to miss it. So Cabo Verde or Cape Verde is an African country in the Atlantic Ocean and it's off the coast of West Africa. And if you can find um, Senegal on the map, you know, just go a bit left and you would find the nine islands of, or the 10 islands of uh, Cape Right there and um, of the 10 islands of Cape Verde um, nine are inhabited and um, the islands are the island of Santiago, Boa Vista, uh, Mayo, Brava, Sao Vicente, Santo Antão, Santa Lucia, Sao Nicolau and Fogo which is the volcanic island. So what is Cape Verde really known for? So Cape Verde is actually quite known for its tourism. You know a lot of British people um, like to go there you know because I mean in Cape Verde there's roughly 300 days if not more of sunshine so it makes sense for people to want to go there and do vacations and you know imagine going on vacation and having nine islands to explore and you can just hop around islands by ferry by plane you know so all of these things um, made the island interesting but how did I get there so when I was in Israel um, I had the plan of moving to Barbados okay and my plan was to move to Barbados because it's an African country you know with the hopes of probably um, staying there, becoming a temporary resident, then a permanent resident, and then hopefully becoming a citizen because their passport is very, very good actually in comparison to my shitty Nigerian passport. So the whole plan was to go to Barbados, you know, and try to live there. But when I got to Barbados, you know, the expectation and the reality, the gap was so, so high because I mean, online they say it's easy to relocate, and then the government was coming up with a new relocation. Um, scheme to help people relocate but at the end of the day when we got there we realized that it's not so easy i mean after we spoke to a lawyer we realized it wasn't so easy and besides i realized that also that barbados probably wasn't for me because i mean yes it's also black people living there but i mean i have nothing in common with these people besides the color of our skin right because their culture is different and it's so expensive there and it's hard to get fresh foods and all of these things and at the end of the day, you know, I still wanted to explore my options of living there and after my one month stay, um, I basically got kicked out in the sense that my visa renewal didn't, <laughs> did not go through. So I was just like, fuck it, you know, whatever, like maybe this is a sign that I don't need to be here. And so I started looking for another place to go to because of course I don't want to go back to Nigeria. So the next place to go to that was an African country with black people um, was Cape Verde. We found it, actually Rafi found it because he's like a master researcher. So 
he knows how to find these places. So we found Cape Verde and at the end of our stay in Barbados, we moved to Cape Verde. Before we moved actually, I contacted my siblings and they moved with us. So that's another story. I'll make another video about that sometime. But yeah, basically I moved to Cape Verde with my brother and my sister and my husband Rafi. So we all landed on Saw Island. It was uh, tourism season. It was going on. We arrived at night. So during the day, you know, my first impression was, okay, it's, um, it's a bit dry, <laughs> you know. Yes, there's nice beaches on the coast, but like driving it through Espargos where the, where the um, airport is, it's like, oh, it's a bit dry, but yeah, whatever, you know. It looked okay, not like the richest place with skyscrapers or anything, but like a nice small island, you know, and um, yeah. From there, we took a plane, local airline, you know, Binta Airlines. We took the plane to Santiago Island, which is the island where the capital city is. And so, yeah, when we got there, you know, it had more people, more things were going on, not with regards to tourism, but with regards to um, living, because most of the population of Cape Verde live on Santiago Island. Actually, the total population of Cape Verde is over 569,000 people, based on statistics from this year, actually. So it's not so many people spread out across nine islands, right? Crazy. So yeah, um, we got there and we, you know, started making our lives there. And you know, life there was pretty amazing, actually. It's one of the most chill times I've ever had in my life. Like, it's like you're lost in the world, literally. And you're just somewhere isolated from the chaos and madness of the world. And living this life that, you know, you don't exist, basically. You're just somewhere doing whatever you want, enjoying, you know, going to the beach, having all these road trips. And it was pretty amazing, you know. Yes, when you land in Praia, you know, yes. When you start driving through the city, the buildings don't look so great, you know, because <laughs> Cape Verdeans, they tend to build European style, but sometimes some of the buildings are not completed and sometimes they don't like to paint the outside so it looks a bit rough but don't let that discourage you it's actually an amazing place to live in and you know that was how I found myself there and life there was pretty awesome okay I'm not gonna talk about why I only spent nine months there why I didn't stay there permanently I'm not gonna talk about that in this video but basically Living in Cape Verde is one of the best experiences I've had because it's pretty chill. You know, there's peace of mind. The people are nice and friendly. You know, yes, they don't speak English, most of them, like, except it's young people. They speak Portuguese or Criollo, which is like the pidgin or the derivative or Criollo of Portuguese. But, you know, yeah, the place is amazing. Like, you wake up, depending on where you live, you can walk to the beach. And, you know, life is pretty chill. You can have all the types of fresh fish that you want, caught straight from the river. Like, it was so amazing and I really love living there. So who is Cape Verde for, really? So because I saw how amazing Cape Verde was and it's an African country that Nigerians, like myself, do not need a visa for, on my social media, I started promoting Cape Verde as a proper relocation destination and an affordable one for many Nigerians in comparison to other expensive first world countries, you know, like America or Canada and all of these things. But, you know, while I was promoting that, you know, the downside of all of that was that Cape Verde is made up of small islands and it's a small country. So, of course, this means that there's not enough job opportunities, you know, there's um, limited resources, basically, and life is pretty chill and calm. So if you're looking for big city life, you're not going to find it there. So who is... Cape Verde good for? So I would say that Cape Verde is best for anyone who is a freelancer, who's a digital nomad, who is a remote worker, you know, you make your income online and you're not restricted to a certain place. I would say that Cape Verde is the best for you, especially if you're not a Nigerian. I mean, I say this because over time, many Nigerians have abused their freedom of movement to Cape Verde and now freedom is quite restricted and it's now more regulated. Like you need to go through a bunch of processes in order for you to really relocate to Cape Verde these days. It wasn't as easy as back then in 2020, you know, but now 
if you are not a Nigerian and you're from any other country, basically, um, whether in Africa or in North America or wherever you're from, if you work online and you earn most of your income online, which means you're not going to be dependent on the local economy and you love a quiet, serene life with peace of mind, no stress at all. I mean, the motto of k word is semestresse, meaning no stress at all. So if you are about that no stress life, then k word is perfect for you. And the relocation process is pretty straightforward. You know, you can go visit without a visa, especially if you're from one of these countries where you don't need a visa to visit Cape Verde. You can go visit, see if it's for you. And after that, you extend your stay for one month. And after this one month extension, you then apply for a three months visa and then a six months visa. And only after that, do you qualify to apply for temporary residency, which is renewable every two years. So yeah, so if you're someone who works online and you're looking for a serene life where you can have your peace of mind, go to the beach, do whatever you do, have fun, you know, and have a great time, then Cape Verde is for you. But if you're someone who's looking for a big city life or you're looking for a job, you're looking for more opportunities, you're looking for a place with a hustle and bustle or a place where you can hustle and, and make a good career or something, Cape Verde is really not the place for you because first of all, the very limited jobs that are available in Cape Verde, to even be able to work in the local economy, you must speak either Portuguese or Creole. That's already a deal breaker. And, and not just that, like most of the jobs in the local economy are already taking. I mean, there's some Cape Verdeans who are unemployed. So if they can't even find jobs, who are you, the foreigner coming to work in this environment? You know, some of the jobs that may be available may be in tourism, on Sal Island, but you know, there's no guarantee of anything. And yes, maybe there are opportunities for you to start a business, but you know, there's no guarantee. And I feel like if you're gonna be looking for a job, Cape Verde is not for you at all. Like you probably need to go somewhere else, you know, where you can have more opportunities and more resources available to you. So yes, um, I don't know if I really explained um, my experience living in Cape Verde, but basically um, the nine months I spent in Cape Verde were amazing, was pretty chill, it was awesome. Yes, when the pandemic came, it sort of limited things a bit, but I think, um, we were only restricted for like a month or two and after that things were pretty much back to normal yes you have to social distance yes you had to wear your mask or something but you know things were pretty back to normal and life just fucking continued you know so i feel like that's one of the good things as well about living on an island because all these heavy restrictions and control all of these things don't exist there so in my next video guys i'm gonna be sharing with you all the things that i loved about living in Cape Verde and all the things that i absolutely hated about living there which actually contributed to me not being there right now and me moving to Montenegro. So if you found this video useful, uh, make sure to like, subscribe. Um, actually, if you're interested in relocating to Cape Verde or you want to learn more information, I've written a Cape Verde relocation guide detailing everything you need to know from the process of relocation to cost of living, the quality of life and everything you need to know. And you can find my Cape Verde relocation guide in the description below. And if you want to learn more about Cape Verde because you're seriously interested, my siblings are residents of Cape Verde. Even though I left Cape Verde, my siblings stayed there and they've been residents for over two years now so if you want to learn more i will link my sister's youtube channel it's called uv's log where she um, talks about cape Verde and where she shares all this useful information about cape Verde, and you can find the link in the description up there so did you find this video useful did i blabber on and on if you have any questions ask me in the comments and uh until next time thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye Thank <laughs> you.